about a quarter of six. We stepped out, Martin and I stepped on the balcony. We're up on the balcony. People are down in the courtyard. It's, it's, it's really full. Uh, and he was greeting people. He saw Jesse Jackson. And he hollered to Jesse, Jesse, you are not dressed for dinner. Plus, don't take that whole band to Kyle's house. Jesse said, I'm not taking the band, but I want you to meet the band leader. He said, I didn't know a shirt and tie would have, was a prerequisite for dinner. I thought it was an appetite, and I got an appetite. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Smart alecky. So Jesse and Ben Branch, who grew up in Memphis, the leader of his band, started walking towards the balcony to meet Ben, to meet Martin. Martin stood here and I stood here. He was leaning over the railing, talking to Jesse and Ben. I said, guys, come on, let's go. We have a rally tonight also. I got about five steps or more, and the shot rang out. Kapow! People were ducking under cars and ducking behind the cars. They didn't know if the shooter would continue to shoot. Some people thought it was a car backfiring. I turned and saw him lying on the floor of the balcony. I rushed to his side. There was a tremendous hole in the side of his face. There was a bigger wound under his shirt I could not see. The bullet's called a dum-dum. It comes out of the barrel. It heats up going through the barrel of the gun. And then it comes out jagged. It doesn't come out straight, so it tore all of his chest out. Blood was everywhere. It was just a bloody scene. I ran in the room to pick up the phone to call an ambulance. I was beating on the wall saying, answer the phone. You had to use the operator to, to right. get a phone out. I was hollering, answer the phone, answer the phone. But she never answered because she left the switchboard when she heard the shot. Came out into the courtyard, and she looked up and saw what had happened. She had a heart attack on the spot. She died a few days later. She was the motel owner's wife. I ran back outside. The police were coming. And I hollered to them, call an ambulance on your police radio. Dr. King has been shot. And they said, where did the shot come from? And so the fam there's a famous picture of us pointing uh, to the building across the, mm -hmm. across the street. The police came and secured the balcony and stopped people from coming up. Mm -hmm. And they said, we will shoot this dreamer and see what happens to his dream. That's where the witness comes in again. Yes, it is true. You can kill the dreamer. But it is also true that you absolutely cannot kill the dream. And so the dream is still alive 40 years later.